Welcome to our channel Historical Photo. Today we will show you wonderful video about Stuart Tesses. Do not forget to subscribe our channel. The flight attendant occupation took permanent shape in the 1930s as women's work. That is, work not only predominantly performed by women but also defined as embodying white, middle-class ideals of femininity. As the nascent commercial aviation industry sought to lure well-heeled travelers into the air, airline managers and stewardesses together defined the new field of in-flight passenger service around the social ideal of the hostess. A stewardess's foremost duty was to mobilize the nurturing instincts and domestic skills to serve passengers, much as middle class, white women were expected to treat guests in their own homes. The early airline's crystallizing idea of the stewardess allows demanded, however, that the hostess to be as desirable as she was nurturing. From the start, stewardess work was restricted to white, young, single, slender, and attractive women. A 1936 New York Times article described the requirements that girls who qualify for hostesses must be petite, weight 100 to 118 pounds, height 5 feet to 5 feet 4 inches, age 20 to 26 years, and to that the rigid physical examination each must undergo four times every year, and you're assured of the bloom that goes with perfect health. The post-WW2 America changed drastically and millions of Americans started to travel on airplanes and the stewardess profession expanded further. Now, young working women did not have to change bedpans or take dictation. They could travel the world, meet important people, and lead exciting lives. The stewardess position was well-paid, prestigious, and adventurous, and it quickly became the nation's most coveted job for women. Scores of qualified young women applied for each opening so airlines had their pick and could hire only the cream de la cream. In order to win a stewardess position, an applicant had to be young, beautiful, unmarried, well-groomed, slim, charming, intelligent, well-educated, white, heterosexual, and doting. In other words, the post-war stewardess embodied mainstream America's perfect woman. She became a role model for American girls and an ambassador of femininity and the American way broad. The appearance was considered as one of the most important factors to become a stewardess. At that time, airlines believed that the exploitation of female sexuality would increase their profits. Thus, the uniforms of female flight attendants were often form-fitting, complete with white gloves and high heels. In the United States, they were required to be unmarried and were fired if they decided to wed. A stewardess could not be pregnant. A stewardess could not grow older than her early 30s because no one tried to hide the fact that flight attendants were there to be eye candy. Big name designers had a fun time dressing them up and coming up with sexy new gimmicks to promote air travel. In 1968, Jean Lee gave United Airlines stewardesses a simple, model line dress with a white stripe down the front and around the collar and paired it with a big, blocky kefi type cat. The stewardess image reached its height of sexualization, becoming a collective cultural fantasy that airlines shamelessly promoted through their advertising. The dark side of this trope was that women who got this prestigious position were often subjected to sexual harassment from drunken passengers, who might pinch, pat, and proposition the stewardesses while they work. According to Kathleen Barry's Femininity in Flight, a history of flight attendants, despite their dual roles as mothering servants and objects of sexual fantasy, stewardesses were fighting for changes inside the airline industry. The U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission first complainants were female flight attendants complaining of age discrimination, weight requirements, and bans on marriage. Originally, female flight attendants were fired if they reached age 32 or 35 depending on the airline were fired if they exceeded weight regulations, and were required to be single upon hiring and fired if they got married. In 1968, the EOC declared age restrictions on flight attendants' employment to be illegal sex discrimination under Title Roman 7 of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The restriction of hiring only women was lifted at all airlines in 1971. The no marriage rule was eliminated throughout the U.S. airline industry by the 1980s. The last such broad categorical discrimination the weight restrictions were relaxed in the 1990s through litigation and negotiations. 